Hey guys, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss about subdivisions of Himalayas. We have already made video on the process of formation of Himalayas where we have discussed how Himalayas were formed. Then in another video we discussed about the fold mountains and fault boundaries in Himalayas. And in the third video we discussed about formation of syntaxial bands and the structure of Himalayas. So if you have not watched this video then I would request you to watch these videos. In this video we will discuss about different subdivisions in Himalayas. Now we know that Himalayas was formed due to collision of Indian plate and Eurasian plate. Here we can see current boundary of Indian plate and we can see that because of the collision all along this boundary we see formation of mountains. But not all of these mountains are called Himalayas. Now during the collision we see that the compressive forces on the western edge of Indian plate acted in northwestern direction creating chain of mountains in north south direction while on the northern edge of Indian plate the compressive forces acted in north direction creating mountains in east to west direction. Moreover, duration and nature of these forces also varied. That is why mountains on the western edge are called Kirthar mountains and Suleiman mountains and they are not considered part of Himalayas. The compressive forces on the western edge and the northern edge of Indian plate were acting in different direction. Therefore, we see formation of syntaxial bands on northern eastern edge of Indian plate. These syntaxial bands can be seen as bands in orientation of mountain chains. Moreover, these syntaxial bands presence can be clearly seen in flow of Indus river which takes a sudden southwards turn near our Nanga Parvat. This turn is due to the formation of syntaxial bands. Similarly, on the eastern edge of Indian plate, the compressive forces during collision acted in eastern direction, creating mountains running in north-south direction. These mountains here are called Purvanchal Mountains or Northeastern Himalayas in India, while in Myanmar they are called Arkanyoma Mountain Ranges. Again, due to difference in direction of compressive forces on eastern edge, we see formation of syntaxial forces on the northeastern margin of our Indian plate. These syntaxial bands is clearly visible in the form of bend in the mountain chains. The syntaxial bands presence can be clearly seen in flow of Brahmaputra river, where an eastwards flowing Brahmaputra river suddenly takes a southwards turn and enters Arunachal Pradesh. This occurs because of presence of syntaxial bands in Himalayas over here. So only the mountains in between the syntaxial bands is called Himalayan mountain system. The western edge of Himalayan mountain system is marked by Indus river near the Nanga Parvat peak while the eastern edge of Himalayan system is marked by Brahmaputra river near the Namchabaroa peak. Now if you look at the location of Himalayan mountains, we can see that in the north the Himalayan mountain system is bounded by Pamir Nord and Kunnunsan. In the northeastern direction we see Tibetan plateau. On the western side we have Hindukus mountains and Suleiman mountains. While in the eastern side we have Purvanchal Himalayas. And towards the south we have Indo-Gangtic and Brahmaputra plains. The Himalayan mountain system is further divided based on the origin of these mountain ranges. During the collision, there were three major regions. The first was Eurasian plate, the second was Tethys ocean flow and the third was Indian plate. The mountains which were uplifted from Indian plate are called Himalayas which includes Greater Himalayas, Lesser Himalayas and Siwaliks or Outer Himalayas. The mountains which were uplifted from Eurasian plate and Tethys sea are called Trans Himalayas in our NCRTs. However, if we refer to any major work on Himalayas, we can see that the mountains north of Himalayas are further classified into two parts. The mountains formed from Tethys ocean floor is called Tethian or Tibetan mountain range, while the mountains formed from Eurasian plate is called Trans Himalayas. Now let's further see in detail subdivisions of Himalayas and Trans Himalayas. So let's start with Trans Himalayas. They were formed around 80 to 65 million years ago from Eurasian plate due to volcanic activity. 
and therefore they are mainly comprised of volcanic and granitic rocks. Trans Himalayas are 1600 kilometers long and its width varies from 225 km to 40 km. The first major range of Trans Himalayas is Karakoram mountain range. Karakoram mountain range is another most mountain range in Himalayan system. Karakoram mountain starts from Pavinot in the west and extends around 600 to 800 km in the east. It covers whole of Ladakh and reaches the Chinese region. The southern margin of Karakoram is formed by Indus river in its western side and Siok river in central or eastern side. Karakoram ranges are one of the loftiest ranges in the world. They have several mountain peaks above 8000 meter range. The elevation in Karakoram rarely falls below 5500 meter. Mount K2, also called Mount Goodwin Austin, located in POK, is the second highest mountain peak in the world and it is located in Karakoram Range. In Karakoram Range, we find Karakoram Wildlife Sanctuary and Changtang Wildlife Sanctuary. The famous Pangong Lake is also located in foothills of Karakoram Range in Changtang Wildlife Sanctuary. Karakoram range is also home to many large glaciers in the world outside of polar regions. These glaciers include Siachen Glacier, Baltoro Glacier, Pifo Glacier, Hisper Glacier and Batura Glacier. The Siachen Glacier is the longest glacier of India. Along the southwestern margin of Siachen Glacier, we have Saltoro range, which is a sub-range of Karakoram range. This range defines the boundary between India and Pakistan in this region. This boundary is called actual ground position line. The peaks of this mountain range were captured in 1984 under Operation Meghdud by Indian Army, just weeks before Pakistan's plan to capture the peaks. We will discuss more about it in detail when we discuss Indo-Pak relations. Next important mountain range in Trans Himalayas is Ladakh mountain range. It runs from the confluence of Indus and Siok river in Baltistan POK to Indo-Tibetan border. For most of its part, Indus river forms its southern boundary. Ladakh range was also formed due to volcanic activity. Therefore, it is also formed of granitic and volcanic rocks. Stok Kangri, in northern part of Hemis National Park, is the highest peak in the region. The climate in this region is mostly cold arid due to low rainfall. The extension of Ladakh range in Tibetan region is called Kailas mountain range or Gangdise in Chinese. The highest peak of this range is Mount Kailas and near Mount Kailas we have two important lakes, Lake Rakshas and Bansarovar Lake. The eastern section of Trans Himalayas is called Naicheng Thangla mountain. It runs north of Brahmaputra river and parallel to Himalayas. On eastern margin of Trans Himalayas, on the east of Brahmaputra, we see a part of Trans Himalayas extends southwards in Arunachal Pradesh. This part of Trans Himalayas is called Kangri Karpo. This range extends in Arunachal Pradesh till Misme Hills, which is located on the boundary of India and Myanmar. Now moving forward to Tethyan Himalayas. The Tethyan Himalayas are separated from Trans Himalayas by Indus Suture Zone. The Suture Zone basically means a tectonic line along which two continental plates collide and join with each other. So Indus Tasangpo Suture Zone is the region where Indian plate comes in contact with Eurasian plate. Now let's move on to Tethyan Himalayas or Tibetan Himalayas. Now, the Tethyan Himalayas or the Tibetan Himalayas were formed due to upliftment of Tethys ocean flow. That is why we see large amount of fossils and sedimentary rocks in these mountains. Average width of Tethyan Himalayas is 100 kilometers, making it broadest zone of Himalayas. The major range of Tethys Himalayas is Jaskar range. It extends from Suru River in Kargil to Karnali River or Kali River on Indo-Nepal border. Jaskar Range is mainly found in Ladakh Union Territory and Uttarakhand. 
द माउंटेन्स डू नॉट शो सिग्निफिकेंट प्रेजेंस इन हिमाचल प्रदेश द हाइएस्ट पीक ऑफ जस्कार इज माउंट कामेत लोकेटेड इन उत्तराखंड वाइल्ड माउंट रियो पुरग्रील इज लोकेटेड ऑन हिमाचल चाइना बॉर्डर हेमिस नेशनल पार्क इज लोकेटेड इन जस्कार रेंज बिटवीन इंदस एंड जस्कार रिवर किब्बर वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी एंड गंगोत्री नेशनल पार्क ऑल्सो कवर सम पार्ट ऑफ जस्कार रेंज Now let's move on to Himalayas. The Himalayas is separated from Trans Himalayas or Tethyan Himalayas by South Tibetan detachment. The northernmost part of Himalayas is called Greater or Higher Himalayas. These are a continuous chain of mountains from Nanga Parbat to Namcha Barwa. The range has very few gaps, mainly provided by antecedent rivers like Satluj, Ghagra, Kosi, Brahmaputra, or Sankos. Due to compressive forces acting from southern side during the upliftment of Himalayas, the southern slopes of all Himalayan mountains are steep compared to northern slopes. The greater Himalayan rocks experienced very heavy compressive forces during the upliftment process causing crystallization and metamorphosis of the rocks therefore the greater himalayas range mainly have crystalline igneous or metamorphic rocks greater himalayas has an average height of 6100 meter and it is 25 km wide greater himalayas is home to some of the loftiest mountains in the world some of them include Mount Everest, Kanchanjunga, Manaslu, Lhotse, Dholagiri, Annapurna, Badrinath, Nanda Devi, Nanga Parvat, Nunkun Mountains. In Greater Himalayas, in the Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory region, we find Dhachingam National Park and Kistwar National Park. Pin Valley National Park, Khir Ganga National Park, and Greater Himalayan National Park are present in Himachal Pradesh region of Greater Himalayas. Gangotri National Park, Valley of Flower National Park, and Nanda Devi National Park, which is also part of a biosphere reserve, is located in Uttarakhand and are part of Greater Himalayas. The Kanchanjunga National Park of Sikkim is also located in Greater Himalayas. Molling National Park in Arunachal Pradesh is also located in Greater Himalayas. Greater Himalayas is also home to many important glaciers which are source of important rivers. Some of the important glaciers of Greater Himalayas are Daimir Glacier near Nanga Parvat, Rupal Glacier, Safad Glacier and Drangdrung Glacier of Jammu and Kashmir, Bandarpush Glacier from which Yamuna originates and Gangotri Glacier from which Ganga originates are both part of greater himalayas and are located in uttarakhand uttarakhand also has melam glacier pinder glacier and mana glacier the zemu glacier of sikkim is also a part of greater himalayas now let's discuss about lesser himalayas main central thrust separates greater himalayas from lesser himalayas lesser himalayas is formed of metamorphosed sedimentary rocks and minor volcanic and granitic rocks it is about 80 km wide with an average height of 1300 to 4600 meters lesser himalayas houses some of the famous hill stations of india like simla masuri rani khet nainital almoda and darjeeling lesser himalayas can be further divided into sub ranges the first and most important is peer panjal range the lesser himalayas in the jammu and kashmir region is called Pir Panjal range it extends from Kishan Ganga river in the north till Bias river in Manali Pir Panjal range is the largest section of lesser himalayas Deo Tibba and Indrasen mountain peaks are the two most important mountain peaks of Pir Panjal range Indrakila national park is also located in Pir Panjal range the Pir Panjal separates Kashmir Valley from Jammu region and therefore we see there are many passes which connects cities in both these regions the Jawahar tunnel under Banihal pass connects Banihal and Kaziganj while Atal tunnel under Rohtang pass is also located in Pir Panjal range Rohtang pass in eastern Pir Panjal range also connects Manali and Lahore 
in between pir panjal and greater himalayas is located kashmir valley which is famous for kareva deposits we will discuss kashmir valley and kareva formation in detail in another video now the next part of lesser himalayas is dholadhar mountain range the lesser himalayas in himachal range is called dholadhar mountain range it starts from dalhousie and stretches across himachal pradesh it merges with pir panjal range near manali the highest peak in dholadhar range is hanuman tibba which is about 5980 meters dholadhar ranges are formed only in himachal pradesh they do not spread to other states of india the kangra valley lies between lesser himalayas and shivaliks in himachal pradesh In Uttarakhand the lesser Himalayas are split into two branches the first is called Mussoorie range which is located very close to Dehradun city the highest peak of Mussoorie range is Mussoorie the next part of lesser Himalayas is Nag Tibba and it is parallel to Mussoorie and it extends till Nepal border the Govind Pasu Vihar national park is located in Nag Tibba range After Nag Tibba the lesser Himalayas enter Nepal where they are called Mahabharat Lake Now moving forward let's discuss about Shivaliks Shivaliks are separated from lesser Himalayas by main boundary thrust Shivaliks which extend from Jammu to Assam in the east has an average elevation of about 900 to 1500 meter and the width of shivalik varies from west to east it is wider in the west and very narrow in the east the maximum width of shivalik is 45 km while its minimum width is as less as 8 km shivaliks for most of its part are continuous mountains except for a 80 to 90 km gap in west bengal between tista river and raidak river The Shiva Lakes in Jammu and Kashmir region is called Jammu Hills. In Uttar Pradesh, we see an extension of Shiva Lakes entering into Uttar Pradesh, which is called Dudhwa Range. In Nepal, the Shiva Lakes are called Churia Ghats. In Arunachal and Assam region, we see that Shiva Lake mountains can be further divided into smaller mountain ranges like Dafla, Miri, Abor, and Mismi. The southern slopes of Shiva Lakes in eastern part of Nepal to Assam is covered with thick forests which are called Tarai forests but the forest cover sharply decreases in western region due to decrease in rainfall The southern slopes of Shiva Lakes is home to a large number of national parks and wildlife sanctuaries some of the important ones are Rajaji National Park and Kobret National Park in the Uttarakhand Dudhwa National Park in UP, Valmiki National Park in Bihar, Jalda Prava and Buxha National Park in West Bengal, while in Assam, Raimona, Manas and Nameri National Parks are located in foothills of Shiva Lake. In between Shiva Lakes and Lesser Himalayas, we see large number of longitudinal valleys which are called dunes in the west and duars in the east. The Dehradun is an example of this kind of dune valley. some of the important dunes are kotli dun and udhampur dun we will discuss the formation of dunes in another video in detail i hope you have liked our video and if you have liked this video then please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends thank you for watching the video